What's going on everybody? Jay Hayes here. So today I'm doing a review on a device that I was sent for the purposes of the review. If you guys have not seen the video where I did it on the Tanko by Otis Collection, Otis Collection has been around for a long time long time they're kind of known for the high-end stuff i guess they started out with this dripper and then they made a v2 and i think they're making an ogeny v2 now those of you that don't know a genesis is basically where you make stainless steel wicks you bring it down through the tube sort of like you picture an rdta just building the coils in a vertical fashion while sticking the stainless steel mesh through it. You could use silica, you could use a blend of silica and cotton, silica and stainless steel. We're talking about as wicking materials, not so much as heating on it. Stainless steel back then, no one used for heating. That's kind of a new thing. They made some billet box accessories, really, really nice shit. Did the tank go? Post the link for that guy right there. They saw the video. They didn't ask me to take it down. I said, let's make this right. Let me make this right. Let me send you some new shit. And they sent me the black tanko. I do believe they sent me another PMMA glass though for the stainless steel. Not a hundred percent sure, but they sure as in fact did unfuck the problem. They also went a step further. I'm sure someone's going to correct me down below. I am almost 98% sure that these are the pioneers of single coil drippers, meaning that they were the first company to make a single coil dripper. And then everything since then has been loosely based off of this. I may be incorrect, but I know pretty. I know it's pretty damn close to being the first. I'm not sure if the Narda was first. Single coil Addies haven't really been a humongous thing. They were around back in the day, like when drippers first came out and they were kind of like a two post and you would wrap it around and it would just be really shitty, like the Igo W3. There wasn't really many high end ones and if there was any high-end ones they were really designed for dual coil like the hobo 3.1 but you could run a single coil in it well this really specializes in single coil and it can be used for dual coil I'm not quite sure as to why you would use this in a dual coil just because of the restrictiveness of the airflow now i did get in fact the dripper which is number eight eight not 800 not 80 eight then i got three different caps i got the pmma the delrin and the ultim i didn't get a squonk pin i don't know if they don't make a squonk pin i'm not sure if they didn't include it in the package but i didn't get a squonk pin and that's perfectly fine because i'm not going to be using this as a squonk setup so without further ado let's flip it ocd obsessive compulsive disorder otis collection and design oh charlie don't. Obstacles change daily. You have the option, depending on where you purchase this from, to actually get this tank with the Ultim section. I don't believe there's any sites to sell with the Addy and the PMMA or the Addy and the Delrin. I just don't feel like that's a thing. All of these caps are essentially proprietary in a sense where the drip tips that are in them is not going to be a typical 510 and it's not going to be an 810. It's going to be a little bit bigger than an 810 drip tip. Also, there is no O-rings built into the top cap, so you're going to have to get a drip tip, probably custom made, or maybe even Otis Collection makes one. A screwdriver, two extra screws, and some O-rings. Really nothing out of the ordinary here, just very, very basic stuff. Usually when you'll get high-end, it'll come with maybe an extra drip tip and some screws. There's not really anything like there is on Chinese websites where they'll have 50 different things in one dripper. It's not usually the case. Super clean, very basic. Some people may or may not consider this high end, but it is a buck 25 the way that it is without those top caps. So just what you see right here is exactly what you're gonna get for a buck 25. Drip tip on the top is gonna come out real simple. And then there is your double O-ring situation. I'm not quite sure as to why Otis went with the proprietary size. I would have much rather had a non-proprietary size. Usually what you'll find is on high end, they'll either use five tens or they'll use a proprietary drip tip size. Now this is the stock drip tip that it comes with, with a double O-ring. The dimensions are 13.68 millimeters in diameter. And then an 810, 12.64, so it's a full millimeter larger. I was under the impression that this was going to be number eight. However, it is a number five. That's even a lower number. And getting something low of a number like this, I don't know if it's the owner's personal collection or if it is, in fact, something that you're just holding on to. I, I don't know, but I do know I have another one that's like serial number 518 or 519. It's really, really high. Here's your teardrops. 
there is a little bit of a pitch to it as it goes down at an angle. That does mean that the coils you're gonna want to be a little bit more low set and not directly in line like it would be there. You really want it to go as low as possible. A lot of the pictures that I've seen of this, they're using a leg here and a leg here, opposite sides, and they do it like this so the coil is kind of catty cornered. And the reason why they're doing it is just because it's just natural for a leg to go this way and a leg to go this way. There's also pictures of a dual coil, one and one. The only problem with this as a dual coil, because the air is so restrictive, the top cap was gonna get very, very hot. And I don't feel that this would shine best in a dual coil scenario. I also do not feel that having the coils catty cornered like this is going to be the best flavor. I know a lot of people build single coils like that, but to me, what makes sense to me is to literally line the coil up directly in the center like you see this blade. The screws, of course, are going to be Phillips, and you'll see that there's a little bit of a notch there. And the reason why the notch is there is it doesn't allow you to move this about. It kind of locks the pressure plate back into place. I wish there was a little bit of a spring spring-loaded situation because as you lift this up the clamp would go with you but now the way it stands is you're gonna have to get your coil leg underneath there and then clamp it down and same thing on the other side that's not so much of a problem for me when we're talking about high-end drippers they usually require more work than that of low-end or cheaper drippers so on this 025 you'll see that the machining is really really nice very very nicely done you know how a lot of the drippers will see they got those swirly marks all over over it doesn't have that it's really really clean not a huge fan of these would much prefer stainless steel or anything at this point gold is just where we're going being that this is a single coil dripper some people may argue and say that you know you want to put a really big juicy coil in there because it's so large i don't know how i feel about that i don't recommend to use a blade like i'm using that's being a little ridiculous and trying to show off don't do that you're gonna fuck around and cut your finger off. What I'll do is I'll take a pair of pliers like this. If we're gonna make it 90 degree, we're just gonna kind of bend it just like that, okay? And then the same thing on the other side, you're gonna wanna bend to a 90 degree. Not 45, not 30, you're gonna wanna go 90. So I grab it about right there. The way I'm gonna be building this OATI 25 is kind of what I wanted to show you as far as making this a direct drop-in. If you build the coil like how you see me having this right now, it'll work, but the only issue you're gonna run into is wicking. I don't recommend you to build like this just because that's entirely too much work. Hopefully the reward is that much better than how much work I put into this. But what I did was I took an Allen key and I wrapped the wire around the Allen key. Now the reason why I did that, if you wrap it around a screwdriver, finding an Allen key that's gonna fit perfectly is going to be a mission. When I was putting it in, I used this so I could get it as low as possible. A Little bit of a mission for me to wick. I really can't make this any more straighter. You kinda have to keep the whole angular situation going on just because if you straighten it, you're not gonna be able to wick it unless you have like a two wrap and I don't know anybody that uses two wraps. So we're gonna go ahead and cut these legs off. So uh, right now, just close your eyes. Good. Over here, close your eyes. Good. Okay. I'm not gonna lie to you. I'm a little, I'm a little nervous because that is really low. Like it's not gonna be a low build. It's just really, really low. Like how low can you go? So this is the build. Let me tell you this. Uh, yeah. You have to use some really, really, really thin cotton. I'm talking about like as wide as the Q-tip stick is, is as wide as what the cotton is. I don't know how this is gonna wick. Whenever you guys are lining up the airflow on brand new O-rings, after you just clean it, just go ahead and put it down before the actual coil size. You spin it to the right, you can line it up perfectly. Versus if you put it on, it's a little ahead of it. As you back it off, it's gonna pull the dripper off the mod. There it is, the O25. Get on your knees and smile like a donut. Back on top with the O25, which is their O Addy, not the V1, not the V2, but literally the 25 rendition of their dripper. You saw the coil that I have in this is absolutely dainty as hell. If what you would normally build would be a giant or a giantess, this would be a dwarf or a gnome or a ballerina or a fairy. The coil that I have is a little ridiculous. It's a little tiny. And the reason why I wanted to do that is you see a lot of people posting pictures of this when they're doing builds, not just on this, any kind of single coil dripper, they kind of go catty corner so it allows them to wick it up evenly and be good to go. 
The only issue I have with that is it's not really giving it direct airflow on the coil. It's giving it airflow, but not where it needs to go. Not saying that it won't provide good flavor. I just want to line up the airflow as much as I possibly can with my fairy ass coil. 44.5 watts on a 0.62. Let me show you some of the vapor production. Here we go. That's this thing. Like, I, I don't think you understand how small this coil is. Being the way that the airflow is kind of at an angular pitch, what's going to happen is in order to overfill this, you would have to really go past the coil unless you have the really high set coil where the airflow is going to kind of go underneath the coil and then come up and into your mouth or into your nose, depending on how you're vaping. If you're vaping through your nose, then um, you may want to read some manuals or tutorials on how to vape properly. Here's a fun little fact for you. Did you know that you could actually blow ears? Blow ears. Yes. I blow in your ear. Do you blow in mine? Did you know that you could actually blow vape through your ears? I swear to God, that's not a joke. Like, I'm not playing with you right now. Whether you do it right now or you do it when you're done with the video, look up guy smoking through his ears. We all know ear, nose, and throat doctors, right? Because they're all connected. So it, it automatically makes you think that we all could blow vape out of our ears. I have yet to find any reviewer that's able to do this. I don't even think I've ever seen anybody blow vape through their ears. I've seen smoke from like cigarettes, which can't be good. I, I'm just gonna assume that's not good. But that would be pretty cool if someone was vaping and all of a sudden you see vape come out of the sides of their heads like an old 1960s cartoon. You don't want to get mad, the steam flies out the side of their ears. Okay, let's do it again. Wow. Wow. Okay. Uh, to give you an idea of the airflow, it's going to be very, very hard for me to pinpoint this unless you already have something high end. Because this coil is so low set and the air is going directly on it, there's not a lot of free flowing air, meaning that there's none coming from underneath, swollen around the chamber and just going up. It's going directly onto the coil and then thus providing the flavor I'm getting. If you have a high set coil, your airflow is going to go underneath and it's going to be more of an open airflow situation. It's not going to feel obstructed. However, However, I feel the most amount of flavor you're gonna get is by a low set coil. If I was to compare this airflow versus other drippers, just to give you a better perspective of how this hits and how the flavor is, it has more than the Narda, has less than the Nano, about equal to the Hobo 3.1. A little bit more than the Hobo Drifter. That's the best examples I have. That's a high end, a mid end, and then a no end. A $10 end, whatever you want to consider that end. I really like the look of it, and it's very, very simple and clean. It's really good to see companies that step out of the boundaries and say, you know what? Yeah, you did a shitty review. Let's just fix it. Not even asking me to take it down. I have nothing but respect for someone like that. I literally, there is no words that I could explain how I feel towards that. There's just no words. Now, I know a lot of people are concerned with the PMMA, and they say that it's going to break down with citrus um very may well be very may well be i think though the older style is more of a polycarbonate like this has some added ingredients so it doesn't break down as quick i may not even know what i'm talking about right now 44.5 watts same exact cap okay wow that's weird um why does that feel like that is more airflow? Yeah? Um, okay. For some reason, it's not by much. It's not a lot, but there's definitely more airflow on the PMMA. I don't know how that is, because they're both cut out the same way. No, there's definitely more. The black one to me is probably the least, most attractive one. It just looks like a black Delrin cap. It'll look good on something that's solid black. It, look, it doesn't look bad. But keep in mind, that is Delrin, that's not metal. I don't know what it is. Maybe there's something different between the caps on the inside that's creating more of a airflow situation, but both of those are better than the stainless steel rendition.
really good fucking flavor off of this. It covers up the whole dripper, so you can't see any of the stainless steel back. All right, all right, okay, all right, all right, okay, all right, okay, all right. Here's the deal. For single coil drippers, usually anything that's single coil dripper, I utilize as an RSA. Comet, the Wasp, any of these I really use as an RSA. That's not saying that I don't like them as an RDA. The problem I have with most RDAs is, especially single coil, that it's much easier and it lasts a lot longer at me squonking than it does squonking with a dual coil. It's fucking foam, I swear to God. Just due to the, the lack of needing to super saturate my coils. So let me tell you some of the fallbacks. There's like three. Number one, building on this is not the easiest. All the images you see on this device, the coils are set a certain way. That's gonna be a lot easier to do than what I did. So the difficulty of building on this is extreme. I, it's not the hardest thing to build on, but getting a coil down there where I set it makes it very difficult. But if you keep it on the top, you'll get away with it just fine. Number two, what's up with the drift tip, man? Like, what is up? Why are we using proprietary drip tips in 2017? That sucks, asshole. Because I, and I have a lot of custom drip tips. Lawless, big shout out to you, brother. I don't have anything that fits this. It's like the troll is too big. 810, too small. Asparagus, too big. Mini corn on the cobs that you get at Chinese food restaurants in your thing of lo mein, too big. I can't get anything to fit for the drip tip of this, so that sucks. Not saying that the drip tip sucks, but listen, if I'm gonna go PMMA, I wanna go full-blown PMMA. I mean, let me just, let's just go with the clear cap. And then the third and final option is why am I getting more air? I don't know if this is really a negative. I'm just not understanding how I'm getting more airflow with the clear and the Ultim and the Delrin that I am the stainless steel. Unless I'm losing my damn mind and they're all the same. Maybe it's because the thickness of the, I was gonna say cavity, that's, that's definitely not the right word. I was gonna check the inner diameter, but that's not gonna matter because it's all gonna be the same, right? Like, it fits on the deck, so it's all gonna be the same. I don't know. I feel like you just get that much more on the PMMA. I'm really impressed with this dripper for a single coil dripper. If I was to rate this device on a zero to 10, only single coil drippers, I'd give it like an eight. An eight. Proprietary drip tip is really throwing me off, man. I mean, like that's throwing me way through a loop. When you're getting this, I don't see why anybody would use dual coil. You can do it, I'm not denying that. I just don't see why you would. It's a very, very restrictive draw for a one coil. Running a second coil in there, that's just more obstruction of the airflow and just gonna make it even that much more tighter. I don't really know anybody that likes a dual coil dripper that's that tight of a draw. Usually, tight draws follow suit with a single coil dripper. Definitely a good device. Do I feel that it's worth this price point? Yes, would I recommend it? If you're into high-end shit, then absolutely I do. I mean, this is one of the pioneers of single coil dripping airflow. It, it just, it is what it is. The airflow is really fucking cool that it looks like a teardrop, or maybe it's supposed to look like a drop of liquid. Maybe it's not supposed to look like any of those. Maybe it's supposed to be an ovary. I, what up? This fucking bitch in the back doesn't know how to shut the fuck up. If you're into high-end drippers and you like single coil drippers, then absolutely I do. Is it something for everybody? Probably not. The the price tag, I, I don't want to talk too much about the price on this. I'm not going to try to justify it where it's at. It is what it is. All I'm saying is that it's a good device, especially with the PMMA cap. You will see me use this. I'm only going to use this style of dripper on something like a single 2700, single 18650, where I don't need to pull a lot of wattage. And I don't need to run dual batteries just for it to function properly. And I've kept the real. Have you? Jay hates him.